So welcome back everybody to part three of today's learning material. We're going to talk about how to actually build RAG with Langchain. We're going to see how to do it with the Wiz himself. So we're going to align our aim for this little portion of the session. By the end of this piece, we're going to understand the key components of Langchain, including models, prompts, chains, and indexes, and a little bit of an overview on what Langchain was all about. This is this is the sesh. This is Langchain, right? And um, hopefully you guys are going to start to understand what it feels like to really know Langchain versus uh, what it feels like to not know it. And it's a, uh, if you're interested in this, it's a good entry point into this entire world of becoming an AI engineer. Harrison, the founder and creator of Langchain, Put this out this was in their early documentation it's the idea that llms are best when you connect them with other things they're great by themselves but they're even greater together just like all of us all of our little biological llms now they've updated this because they got a bunch of funding months ago and they've been continuously working and crushing it now their sort of language is not just about combining stuff but there's a couple of key components here. One is they want to be data aware. This is the buzzword associated with connecting it to other stuff, right? And the other one is they are looking to help you be agentic. We're not going to cover agents in great detail, though we do have a lot of resources on YouTube and elsewhere for that. We'll link them in the YouTube description of this video, and we'll also shoot you guys a link as you're working today. But this is the idea of the reasoning machine that actually is deciding which tool to pick up next, right? That's the agent here. But we're starting from the base level. So like Lang chain, right? This is the primary abstraction. It's just like connecting stuff to other stuff, chaining the stuff together. That's it. You know, it's not uh, more complicated than that. So you don't really have to focus on that. You just have to understand it as an idea. And the core concepts here are models, prompts, chains, and indexes. When we talk about the model, we're talking about using a chat style model. Often the difference between base model and chat style models is that the chat style model has been more aligned with people. It's had some supervised fine tuning and some instruction tuning done on it. So it listens to instructions pretty well. The chat style model because of that is the sort of standard if you're going to pick up a model off the shelf, pick up a chat style model, pick up an instruction tuned model. And when you do, you're going to want to make sure that you're leveraging each type of message. This is kind of the basics of interacting with the OpenAI API, as we talked about in the first video. The system, user, and assistant messages are important to understand. And just as in OpenAI, you see them in Langchain, the system message is the system message. The user message is now called the human message, and the assistant message is now called the AI message. You'll want to track these as you're building, and the user is sort of you developing, and the user when you're done. The AI message is you being able to act like the AI and give it, let's say, one example, two examples, 10 examples, one shot, two shot, few shot learning. When we set up our prompt template, that's exactly what we're doing. We're doing a little bit of prompt engineering and then we're putting it behind the user interface. That's it, we're setting up a prompt template. So of course we would wanna do that because no template at all is just like, are we really even engineering anything? If we're not even doing prompt engineering, we should always start there. And we have some boilerplate rag prompt engineering um, that we've done in our examples today. Finally, we get to chains, specifically how to call them. This is sort of the uh, older syntax. This is the newer, more elegant, lovely syntax. And this pattern that they've got with this uh, Langchain expression language, so-called, is sort of built with the Lang serve for kind of engaging uh, directly with your Langchain applications via API and the Lang Smith, the full end-to-end -end production 
version of Langchain that includes monitoring, latency and cost, visibility aspects. It includes all sorts of things. Um, this new syntax was built with that in mind. So you want to go ahead and pick this up, not just because it's beautiful, but also because it's useful. Chris will talk a little bit more about it shortly. And then finally, we already heard about this. We got vector stores. We got vector databases. We got indexes. For all intents and purposes, it's the same thing for us today getting started. And so with that, we're ready to sort of look and see how Langchain is the glue that holds all of these pieces together in a simple RAG system. And we're going to use uh, kind of a fun example. Our data is going to be Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. It's got over 46,000 words. We're going to do a chunk size of 200 tokens. Those will be subword level. So something like maybe uh, closer to 100,000 tokens we'll use. And then our models, of course, are going to be the closed source models right now, models that include OpenAI's ADA embeddings model and OpenAI's GPT 3.5 Turbo here. So with that, it's time to kick it off with our first demo of the day and some boilerplate code for everybody. We'll drop the code in the chat and Chris will show you exactly how to build a Hitchhiker's RAG system. Wiz, off to you, man. Thank you, Greg. Okay, so we're going to get started with uh, RAG with Langchain. So we have a number of things to kind of get through here. First of all, all we want to uh, install Langchain as a dependency, of course. Uh, we are going to, uh, you know, leverage this tool throughout the rest of the notebook. So just grabbing it there. We're going to also grab some dependencies for OpenAI. Uh, we're going to be using a GPT-4 preview, which is GPT-4 Turbo for this example, but you can use GPT-3.5 Turbo. It'll work uh, just as well. We're going to have the uh, these two other dependencies. This is just part of the OpenAI dependency. Uh, so we, we need to include those along for the ride. We'll then pass in our OpenAI API key so we can actually access this model, right? It's associated with your OpenAI account. So you'll need an OpenAI API key to use it. And then we're going to start our first model. Now you'll notice that Langchain has the same kind of pattern for all of the different uh, models and resources that you use. Um, you know, the idea is that, you know, we have this uh, same object that wraps all of our models so that if we change the model, we can expect that the uh, program is going to keep working. Uh, so the idea here, and yeah, I'll I'll get uh, I'll make sure there's a link here. I'll drop it in the Zoom chat. Here you go. The idea is, you know, one model object that works for a number of different models, so that we can keep our systems nice and and portable. All we have to do is pass in our model name to this chat OpenAI object, and we're ready to go. Now, the chat OpenAI object does need some uh you know it it does use some specific templating right so when we look at openai's uh, chat endpoints uh it does require you to have this kind of system uh, user or assistant role and so we're going to use langchain's prompts and schema uh you know uh modules to help us put our messages into that format You'll notice that messages is also expected to be a list of messages. So we'll have our system message with content, you are a helpful assistant, and our human message, which is our user message. Uh, what is the significance of a towel in Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? These two modules just help us to wrap our props to ensure that they're in the correct uh, format. Once we have that, we can test our model. All we have to do is pass that list of messages to our OpenAI model, and we get the response in Douglas Adams' the Hitchhiker's Guide, and it goes on and on and on and on to talk about uh, the importance of the towel. Now, that's great, but what if we want a more, uh, you know, complex template? We're going to need RAG for this, so we want to see how this templating works. Well, easy enough, we can use the chat prompt templates to pass in our system and human messages, and we can use the templates here. Now, when we create our first chain, 
you'll see that we can leverage this chat prompt in order to fill in the blank of this content for our human message. And let's see how that looks. We're going to be using the LCEL, which is the Langchain uh, expression language. And you'll see that all we have to do is have these pipes instead of like, uh, you know, uh, LM chain, open bracket, blah, blah, blah. It, that's, uh, that's no longer needed, right? We can use this very simple uh, pattern to describe our chains. So you'll see that all I've done here is I've chained our chat prompt into our OpenAI model. And this is the idea of the pipe operator. It basically means we're going to pipe the thing on the left into the thing on the right or the next thing. So let's look at, now that we've set up our first chain, let's look at how we call it. We're going to use the dot invoke method on our chain and then pass in the key that we want to replace uh, with the value uh, you know, of what we want to replace it with. So if we scroll back up, remember that we have this content placeholder. Well, you'll notice the key that we used for the object we passed into our invoke method has this key content, and that's going to be replaced with hello world. And you'll see here that we get the response, greetings, seeker of the arcane, and bits and bytes, your call resounds. Uh, you know, this is because we use the system message. You are a legendary and mythical wizard. You speak in riddles and on and on. The idea here is we can influence. Um, it's a open AI lang chain library feature, Manny. Yeah, absolutely. It's part of their LCEL a declarative uh, language for uh, making these chains. Super cool stuff, definitely. Um, but the idea is, right, that we uh, invoke our chain and then we pass in an object with all of the uh, uh, keys that we want to replace and then the values of the content we wish to replace those keys with. You can see here that if we want to use a different message, all we have to do is change the value we pass in the content key. So we have, uh, could I please have some advice on how to become a better Python programmer? And we get this absolutely uh, you know, ridiculous, ah, seeker of the serpentine script. You know, it, anyway, it it talks about Python in a wizardy kind of way, uh, which is which is fun. Okay, so now we know how to set up the chain. We know how to set up the chat model, and we know how to uh, you know modify what we pass to our LLM with that prompt template. We're we're basically at rag, right? So let's look at uh, a a naive uh, example which is where we do this manually, which is terrible, right? First of all, we'll check and see. We'll give this system message, you're a helpful assistant. We'll do the same content template message for our human or user message. We'll set up our chat prompt and chat model chain again. Again, all you have to do is uh, you know, pipe the chat prompt into the chat model, or though they're, they couldn't use the chain emoji uh, due to character restrictions, chain the chat prompt into the chat model. Uh, and then invoke the chain with content we wish. We have please define lang chain. Uh, now you'll notice that it has no idea, right? So uh, lang chain came out after the cutoff date of the uh, OpenAI's training, so it 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 has no idea what lang chain is, right? Well, we need to know about lang chain, and we want to be able to answer questions about lang chain. So how are we going to do that? Well, uh, you know. What what we can do is use rag. Now, what we'll notice is that if we ask it what the Langchain expression language is, it has even less of an idea, right? So we need ways to inject this information into our uh, model without training it. We can't train OpenAI's models, right? We don't have access to that. Uh, we can fine tune them if we use the fine tune endpoint, but we can't actually train them to teach them about new topics reliably. So how do we inject that information? Well, we have this new template, which has context and a query. And it says, use the provide context to answer the provided user query. Only use the provided uh, context to answer the query. If you do not know the answer, respond with, I don't know. All right, so that's pretty cool. So what are we gonna do now? Well, basically we're going to pass in a bunch of context that defines what Langchain expression language is. And then we're gonna ask the question, with that additional context that we uh, added, what is Langchain expression language? And because we've added that context, we're able to get 
a very good definition from OpenAI what the Langchain expression language is. So even though we didn't have to train anything, because we gave it the definition of LCEL, it's able to answer the question, what is LCEL? Makes sense, right? But if we have to manually add the the the, the answer to every prompt, what are we using the LLM for, right? Like, I mean, we've already got the answer. Uh, we don't need the LLM. We're, we've already done the work. So this is where we go into retrieval. Now, the basic idea here is that we're going to, as Greg's already uh, discussed, we're going to retrieve context in a more intelligent way uh, through the use of uh, some some clever, uh, you know, a manipulation of of numbers. So let's say, uh, first of all, let's talk about some basics of retrieval, right? Let's say we have every single Hitchhiker's book, uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy book that's ever been printed. There's a bunch of them, right? Well, that would be 500 or 750,000 tokens total, which is way too many tokens to fit into the context window of any uh, any reasonable model. Uh, even the ones that boast huge context windows are going to absolutely crumble under 750,000 tokens. So we have to split these into little chunks, right? The idea is that we have to uh you know modify our source into smaller pieces that are more manageable and the way we do this with langchain is through tools like text splitters text splitters are going to let us uh split our text we're going to use the recursive character text splitter here the recursive character text splitter is absolutely the uh the best text splitter for this case because we know the format of our text. Uh, it is not going to be the best in all cases or even most cases, but uh, you know, depending on your text, it can, it can be great. And this, you know, we alluded to this earlier, but this is the idea that data scientists are not gonna be out of work in any time soon. This, the idea of how to properly chunk and split your texts is gonna be a, a huge differentiator between great rag systems and decent rag systems. But we know that our book's going to be in paragraphs, and there's going to be chapters, and there's going to be sentences. So we're going to use the recursive character text splitter, which is going to first split by double new lines, then new lines, and then on the character. So the idea is that we can use this text splitter to keep the most information together that we can uh, without breaking up uh, you know, important information uh, that might happen in a chapter or in a um, you know, in a sentence. So we can take our Langchain expression language context and split it and wind up with these, uh, you know, these bulleted points per context window, which is great. And the idea is that we want to pare down the information we have per chunk so we can feed it to our LLM as context. Now that we've broken everything into chunks, we need to embed that information. So as we discussed earlier, this idea of embeddings helps us encode semantic information. Uh, so we can use that to determine how closely related semantically two different passages are uh, based on their, uh, you know, how close their vectors are. And so in order to determine this, we're going to use this cosine similarity metric. And the idea is that this is going to help tell us how related these two uh, embedding vectors are. Now, in order to embed our uh, information, we need to use OpenAI embeddings, right? So you can use any embeddings model you want, but for this example, you're using OpenAI. So using this OpenAI embeddings uh, object from Langchain is going to help us tap into text embedding ADA002, which is OpenAI's uh, kind of like uh, marquee embedding model. The idea here is that now we can pass sentences, words, anything in and receive back vectors. So we can do things like embed puppy and dog and then see how uh, related they are and they're pretty related right that makes sense and we have this idea that these vectors have dimensionality which is this you know as we saw earlier we have this uh you know idea of of perhaps age with puppy to dog and calf to cow and then we have this idea of size from uh you know dog to cow and then puppy to calf uh well the idea with ada is that it has 1500 of those dimensions 
So we can describe a lot of really interesting relationships in our text with that many dimensions. Now, we could also repeat this with phrases like a cute little puppy and a huge yucky pile of garbage. And we can see that these two things are less related to each other than puppy and dog. And this is the whole idea of uh, the embeddings and how we can leverage them in order to create a system that can retrieve things for us based on how related it is to our context. All right. So how does this work in practice? Well, basically, we're just going to embed every chunk in our corpus, and then we're going to compare that to the uh, query that our user gave us that's also being embedded. So the idea here is that we can see which of our contexts are most related to our user's query. And we can inject those automatically to answer our questions. So let's see an example of this. You'll see that, uh, and you can go through the code uh, in the collab at, at your own speed. I know I'm zipping through it right now, but you'll have access to this collab so you can uh, go through it uh, at a pace that's uh, more comfortable. We just wanna show you kind of the high level here. The idea is we're going to get our query, we're going to embed our query, and then we're going to compare it to all of the documents we have in our uh, query store or our vector store, uh, what will become our vector database. And the idea is that we're going to retrieve the most related context to it and add that as context to our LLM so it can answer the question, just like we did manually before. Now we're gonna have this kind of automated retrieval process uh, replace that manual work. And we can say questions like, can LCL help take code from the notebook to the production? Now remember, LCL, it, it does have no idea uh, OpenAI had no idea what LCL even was, but now because of this context, we can have it answer the uh, question accurately. And we can even see what uh, you know context it retrieved and notice that we have this question talking about notebook to production and the context that it drew was this makes it easier, easy to prototype uh, a chain in Jupyter notebook using a sync interface and expose it as a streaming interface. So the idea is that it's able to understand the query and then retrieve relevant context and then use that to answer the question. And that's it. So the vector store we use the notebook is Pinecone or the vector database in this case. In Langchain, this is called a vector store. All this means is again, it's a single interface for a number of different services that all do the same effective thing, which is let you store vectors and then let you compare a vector to all the vectors that you've stored. And so we'll be using Pinecone in the notebook. You're free to use whatever uh, uh, you know vector store you most enjoy. Um, the idea is we set up the index. And now that we have this idea right, of props, then uh, you know, adding context to them, then sending them off to the LLM to get a, a response, we can build our Langchain powered RAG system. First thing we're going to do is load up all of those Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy books. We are going to then chunk our uh, original corpus. So where originally we had one big PDF, we're going to chunk it into 516 200 character long uh, chunks. And then we are going to uh, you know, just check and make sure that none of the chunks exceed 200. And we can see that that's true. Now that we have all those embedding vectors, uh, and we have so now, now we have all those chunks, we can embed them using our OpenAI embedding model and storing them into our Pinecone vector database. And we can do this using the from documents method, which is just going to take our split chunks, embed them, and then push them into our index or our vector store. Now, in order to use this vector store as a retriever, we simply use the as retriever method, which is going to let us. Uh, interact with it uh, with the retriever API instead of the vector store API. We also have a face example. If you would disprefer Pinecone, uh, you can use that instead. Uh, totally up to you. Okay, now we're going to finally set up our rag fully in Langchain. We'll set up a rag prompt. We have our context, we have our query and our question, and then we have our use to provide context to answer and on and on. We're going to convert that to a chat prompt template. And then we're going to use the LCEL 
in order to construct our rag chain. First of all, we're going to set the first step of our rag chain as this object, which is going to have a context and a question key. Now, the context is going to be the retrieved context based on our original query. And the question is just going to be passed through to the next step. We'll use the context and the question to populate our rag prompt. See, here's our context and our question. And then we'll pass that into the OpenAI uh, chat model, which is going to uh, pass it to the LLM. Then we're going to pass that response into our string output parser. So that's in a nice format. And that's it. That's the whole thing. So we have this idea of our chain. We're going to chain our context and question into our prompt. Then we're going to chain our uh, our formatted prompt into our model. And then we're going to chain the response from our model into an output parser so that it's in the expected format. And now we can do things like invoke it. What is the significance of towels in Douglas Adams' Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? And we get a great response based on the context that the LM received. And then we pass it something that's not in the context, which is what is the airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow? And we get the answer, I don't know, since our context does not reference swallows or their airspeed velocity at all. And this is the idea. If we had just passed this query into uh, you know, the OpenAI chat model without that prompt that said to not answer if it didn't know, uh, we would get a response. And this way, we're able to, uh, at least in some small way, ground our model uh, and get these uh, very valuable I don't know responses. And that's how you build RAG in LangChain. Thank you so much for bearing with me. I know, again, it was a little bit fast, but uh, you'll, you'll have access to the notebook so you can go through it at whatever pace you desire. Woo, Chris, that was uh, next level. You guys catch all that? No worries. We got the code ready to rock and roll for you. So we saw LangChain. We saw how it's all about being data aware, connecting to other sources of information and knowledge in the world and agentic talked a little bit about that but what we saw is we saw how to actually build a rag system with langchain combining chat models with prompt templates that were prompt engineered we saw how to leverage chains using langchain expression language and how to leverage vector stores like pinecone and face and that's a wrap for rag it's time to get started building today and we really look forward to seeing what you guys build, ship, and share with this code and these ideas.